There's a delicate balance in games that try to merge action and role-playing, and it's difficult to do justice to both ends of the spectrum. More often than not, the action is the casualty, especially when first-person shooting is involved. Borderlands has a sharp blend of solid first-person shooting and good character development with a Diablo-like layer of crazy loot thrown over the top of the whole thing. Between the constant flood of fancy guns and its four-player online co-op, Borderlands is the sort of obsession-inspiring product that will happily steal, nah, let's say 40 or 50 hours from you. <laughs> I'm really good at this. Okay, let's talk about the most important part of Borderlands, the guns. The people behind the game like to talk about how there are bazillions of guns in Borderlands. Technically, they're right. Actually, extra technically, I don't think bazillions is a real number, but uh, anyway, yeah, there are loads of guns in Borderlands. But most of the variation comes from slight differences to things like damage, reload speed, rate of fire, and stuff like that. The big difference from weapon to weapon is going to be its type, and there are eight different types, including pistols, combat rifles, submachine guns, rocket launchers, sniper rifles, and so on. But no two guns are created equal. Even specific weapons you can get from quests can have different stats. The key is finding a style of weapon you're comfortable with. I played through most of the game with a scoped combat rifle with a three-shot burst, but most of the different weapon types come in handy in specific situations. The constant quest for stuff is the real thing that keeps you coming back time and time again. Always room for more loot. You've got four character classes to choose from, each with a unique skill tree and action ability. I went soldier, which feels like the most self-sufficient of the four. By carefully spending my skill points and equipping the right items, I was able to make my soldier quickly regenerate health every time he scored a kill. And the Support Gunner class mod lets you regenerate bullets for your entire team. Yeah, that's right, he grows bullets. The Hunter is set up as a sniper type character. The Siren deals mostly with elemental damage, and the Berserker gets his kicks by punching dudes or blowing them up. There's something to be said for having a well-rounded party of four, but the mix of character classes in a multiplayer game doesn't necessarily make the game more or less challenging. The more players in the fight, the tougher the enemies get. The structure of Borderlands makes it feel like an MMO that you can play all by yourself. It's got a great quest log to help you keep track of your tasks, the world is broken up into zones, and the enemies tend to behave with the typical sort of aggro concepts that you'd expect to see in something like World of Warcraft. The big difference, obviously, is that it only goes up to four players, and there's a definitive end to the game. I saw the ending after 18 hours of play, and that includes the time I spent completing almost all of the side quests. But you won't hit the highest level, level 50, by finishing the game once. Once you complete the game, you open up Playthrough 2. This is a separate, more difficult version of the world that starts at around level 34 and goes all the way up to 50. It's a lot harder, but the rewards are much greater, too. Completing that second playthrough and getting up to level 50 took my total playtime up to around 35 hours. Yeah! Borderlands looks and sounds great, and for the most part, it's a real joy to play. I stand before you as someone who has pumped over 50 hours of time into that game over the course of a week, and I'll probably keep playing it here and there. But the game isn't without its faults. The enemy AI can be pretty rough in spots. I killed a couple of the bosses by standing still and shooting them in their mouths repeatedly. The game's story is paper thin, which is a real shame because it has some great characters and terrific dialogue. Smells like off-worlder. It also needs a good trading interface to let players swap items without risk of someone stealing everything and quitting the server. Awesome. Borderlands also has some technical issues on consoles, and the frame rate can't always keep up with the action when things get hectic. The good news is that the action is solid enough to keep you hooked even in the face of its shortcomings. While I'm still hoping for a patch or two to clean up a couple aspects of the game, it's already ready for prime time, and if you're looking for a great co-op shooter with enough going on to keep you busy for a while, you're in luck. Critical, Biatch!